Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I do a first set of tests of the Whoopstrap 3.0. Specifically, I will evaluate the quality of the sleep tracking and of the heart rate measurements. As always, I don't want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For those of you that are not familiar with the Whoop strap, it's a fitness strap without any sort of screen or on-device interface that you get with a monthly subscription to Whoop. Basically, the strap will track your activities and sleep and try to give you actionable advice about how to plan your day for optimal performance. Or as Whoop phrases it, the strap is designed to help you better understand your body and your behaviors across hardware, software, and analytics. Now, the Whoop strap itself has a number of sensors, an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a PPG sensor, which it uses to measure heart rate, heart rate variability, and respiratory rate. Finally, it has a capacitive touch sensor and a temperature sensor. Now, all of these data feed into the Whoop algorithms to give you a number of scores about your day and also to track your sleep. In this video, I will take a first look at the quality of the sleep stage prediction and also the heart rate accuracy. Let's start off with the sleep stage prediction. For the sleep comparison, I wore the Whoop strap to bed last night. At the same time, I wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself with an infrared camera. The EEG device measures brain waves and muscle movements. It's called the Hypnodyne ZMAX and is used by several of my colleagues in scientific studies. If you're interested in this device, I will link it above. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I also manually went through the whoop strap sleep stages and noted those down in a table so I could analyze them. With the infrared recording, I can actually check what my movements were like and check if the whoop strap correctly predicts those moments that I'm awake. For sleep staging, the WHOOP algorithm uses the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the PPG sensor. So on top here, you see the sort of plot you get from the WHOOP strap, where they indicate your heart rate, and each sleep stage is indicated by a different color. Now it's quite tricky to see, since they're all different colors of blue, but in red, my periods of wakefulness are indicated. So there's these longer periods here that are completely red, where I was awake for a while, according to the WHOOP strap, and there are these short red lines here, which I think are according to Whoop, the moments where I had a short wake up. Now on the bottom here, you see the same plot, but now as I made it with my programming language. So on the vertical axis here, we see the different sleep stages. So awake, REM sleep, light sleep, and deep sleep. And on the horizontal axis here, we have the time during the night. So according to Whoop, I went to bed a little bit before midnight and I went through all these different sleep stages. And these blue lines here indicate these short awakenings that the Whoop detected. Now let's see how that compares to the sleep staging with the EEG device. Now this is what I've plotted on top here. So it's called the ZMAX. And again, we have all the different sleep stages that I went through. So it's the exact same type of plot as I plotted here for the Whoop strap. And this makes comparison a lot easier. Now let's first have a look at these moments where I was awake. Now this is a combination of my EEG recording that I went through, but also the infrared camera recordings that I used. And this way I tried to get the best indication for being awake. So how does this compare to the Whoop strap? Now, if we look at those moments that I was awake according to the ZMAX, we see that most of the times the Whoop strap also picked up either a short wakefulness or a longer wakefulness. So for the awake sleep stages, it appears to do quite well. Now there are of course some small differences. So here, this moment that I was awake according to the ZMAX for a bit longer was only a short awakening according to the Whoop strap. Now I must admit with the ZMAX, I tried not to score these short awakenings since these were not the thing I was looking for. So these are a bit more difficult to judge. And then finally here we have this period of awake according to the whoop strap where I was in REM sleep according to the ZMAX. So there are some small differences, but overall for scoring awake, the whoop strap does pretty well. Now let's have a quick look at deep sleep. So these were the periods that I was in deep sleep according to the ZMAX. And we see that sometimes like here, the whoop strap indeed picks up on deep sleep. And also here and here, it appears to be pretty close, maybe with a slight shift. But here, for instance, we see that this whole period of what was deep sleep was actually being recorded as REM sleep which makes some sense because both in deep sleep and in REM sleep, you don't move so much. So the accelerometer of the whoop strap might have difficulty picking up on this. 
And what was here a short period of deep sleep was actually REM sleep according to the whoops rep. Now finally, let's take a quick look at REM sleep, which is all the parts that are indicated in red here. What we see there that there are some matches and some mismatches between the whoop strap and the Z-Max. So here, according to the Z-Max, I had some REM sleep, which was not detected by the whoop strap, but here and here, it appears to pick up some of the same REM sleep at least. Here, it picks up some extra REM sleep that wasn't there, but this period matches quite good again. And also at the end, there appears to be a partial match. So here I had REM sleep and this matches with what I see for the whoop strap. Here there's an extra piece of REM sleep and at the end it's an okay match between the whoop strap and the Z-Max. Now let's look at this night in a bit more of a structural way. Here I plotted the total percentages of each of the sleep stages for both the Z-Max and the whoop strap. And we can see that overall the whoop strap predicts way too little light sleep and way too much REM sleep. And we can also see that it predicts a little bit too much deep sleep. Now overall the awake has a bit of a better match. Now let's look in a bit more structural way at which of the sleep stages it gets confused. Now that's what I've displayed here in this matrix. On the horizontal axis we have the sleep stages according to the Z-Max and on the vertical axis we have the sleep stages according to the whoop strap. Now I've made each column here sum to 100%. And what we can see in that way is of what was actually deep sleep, what percentage was predicted as deep sleep, what percentage is light, REM and awake. And we can do that for all the sleep stages. So let's have a quick look. So if we were to get everything right, all these percentages should be 100%. And we see they're quite a bit lower. Now what we see here for deep sleep, for instance, is that what was actually deep sleep was only predicted as deep sleep for about 30%, but actually a very large part of it was predicted as REM sleep, which is what we saw before. If we look at light sleep, indeed most of it was predicted as light sleep, but it was also confused with deep and REM. And what we see for what was truly REM sleep is that most indeed was predicted as REM sleep, though some was predicted as light and also as awake. And if you look at awake, indeed most of what was awake was predicted as awake, though some of it was confused mostly with light sleep. Now based on this, I would say that the sleep scoring of the whoop strap is not amazing. The Fitbit definitely does better and probably the Aura Ring also does a little bit better. However, it does appear that the general structure of the sleep scoring, so what happens in which moment, makes some sense. And even though the sleep stages themselves are not perfect, they might still be able to use your awake time and your different sleep stages to give you some indication of how well you slept and also use these to calculate the different metrics that they use to give you actionable advice for your day. I was actually planning to make a larger sleep comparison over seven nights total. However, unfortunately, the whoop strap does not allow easy data export. So I had to copy the sleep stages to Excel manually, which is why I only looked at a single night for now. I asked Whoop for a full data export as they're obligated to provide under GDPR regulation, but this could take up to 30 days. Now, once I get those data, I will analyze my sleep in more detail and also discuss a scientific paper that was published about the sleep tracking accuracy of the Whoop strap. To test the heart rate accuracy of the Whoop strap, I will compare it against the Polar H10 chest strap which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. I wore both the Whoop strap and the Polar H10 chest strap for two spinning sessions and one weightlifting session. That way I can check my heart rate at different heart rate ranges. Now let's have a look at the results. Here I plotted the overall heart rate accuracy of the Whoop strap with my heart rate according to the Polar H10 on the horizontal axis and my heart rate according to the Whoop strap 3.0 on the vertical axis. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement and I made the dot somewhat transparent so that if there's multiple dots in a certain area, the color will be a bit darker. So you can see there's a lot of measurements here and they're roughly all in the same area. And this blue line here indicates perfect agreement between the Polar H10 and the Whoop strap. So any point along this blue line here shows there's good agreement between the Whoop strap and the ECG heart rate measurement. And what we can see overall is that there's generally very good agreement between the Whoop strap and the Polar H10. Now most measurements are in this area here, which is the higher heart rate I have during cardio. We can also see in this lower heart rate area here, which was during weightlifting, that there's generally a good agreement between the Polar H10 and the Whoop strap. However, what we can observe is that overall, most points appear to be a little bit below the blue line. So even in this area here, the heart rate according to the Polar H10 was a little bit higher than according to the Whoop strap. And also most of the time that the Whoop strap makes a mistake, it predicts a too low a heart rate, especially in this area here. Now let's have a look at the individual training sessions to get a better idea of when the Whoop strap makes its mistakes. 
This is the first example I want to show you. This is a spinning session with the time along the horizontal axis and my heart rate along the vertical axis. Now the whoop strap is plotted in red and my heart rate according to the Polar H10 is plotted in blue. And what you can see is that there's generally a good agreement between the whoop strap and the Polar H10. But as we saw in the plot before, my heart rate according to the whoop strap always appears to be a little bit below my heart rate according to the Polar H10, even at its peak. And what we can also see is that there's often a slight delay in increase in heart rate with the whoop strap according to the Polar H10, where they agree pretty much exactly when my heart rate goes down. When my heart rate goes up, there's a slight delay in increase in heart rate according to the whoop strap compared to the Polar H10. Now let's see how this looks for the second training session. Now this is the one I've plotted here, and generally we see the same pattern. My heart rate according to the whoop strap is a little bit below my heart rate according to the Polar H10, and in the increase in heart rate there's a slight delay in increase, whereas with the decrease there's a very good match. Now finally let's look at a weightlifting session. And that's what I've plotted here. Each increase in heart rate you see here in blue according to the Polar H10 is one set I did. And what you can see is that the whoop strap records a much lower heart rate than the one I actually had. Now this is what I've seen for a lot of optical heart rate sensors. They have a lot of problems with this quick increase in heart rate that quickly decreases again. And in addition, my arms move a lot more and are tense a lot more during these weightlifting sessions than they are during cardio, which might also influence the measurements. So overall, you can see that the whoop strap does follow the general pattern of heart rate, but it really misses these spikes in heart rate I get during weightlifting. Similar to sleep tracking, I was also planning to do a larger heart rate comparison. However, I could also not export the heart rate data directly from Whoop. This meant I had to find a workaround. If you want to do something similar, I ended up connecting the Whoop app to Strava. And to get usable data, I exported it using a Chrome extension called Sauce for Strava. So shout out to Justin for creating that. When it comes to sleep tracking, based on my admittedly limited test, I would say that the whoop strap had marginal performance. It predicted too little light sleep and too much deep and REM sleep. It also often predicted what was actually deep sleep as being REM sleep. However, it could mostly pick up on those periods where I was awake. And there still seems to be some of the correct structure to the sleep stage prediction overall. And therefore it might still be useful for calculating the different metrics that whoop provides. The whoop strap did perform pretty well at heart rate tracking. It had a slight delay in picking up an increase in my heart rate and overall it seemed to slightly underestimate my heart rate. However, in general, I would say it performed pretty well, especially for my cardio workouts. As I found with most optical heart rate sensors, it did not perform great during weightlifting. I should mention some of the limitations of the data that I showed here. First of all, I just tested it on a limited number of days and just on myself. I have to do larger tests to make sure that the results are consistent once I get the data export from Whoop. Second, I wore the Whoop strap about halfway up my forearm. Now I'm not sure if I would get different results when wearing it for instance on my wrist. Finally, to do a full sleep comparison, it would be good to also test the Whoop strap against the full scientific polysomnography setup. Now I actually plan to build my own polysomnography device with open BCI components somewhere in the first half of the next year. That way I will not have to rely on sleep labs for my testing, which is especially difficult in these times of Corona. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.